and now an art exhibition just a short drive away from the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, looks at the sport's popularity throughout its history. Dana Jacobson got a look. In a small studio in Brooklyn, Sean Leonardo creates contemporary art that examines big issues like identity and masculinity, subjects he became familiar with as a football player at Bowdoin College in Maine. How different of an artist do you think you'd be without football? Incredibly. Leonardo produced this piece of performance art called Bull in the Ring, which first appeared at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art in 2008. It's not an experience I would ever forget. And not in you, a positive way. Not in a positive way, no. The drill, which has been banned for the most part or amended, has a single player defending himself from teammates who are charging from all directions. There's no accident that all the players are wearing not only my number, they're all also wearing visors. This was all because in my mind this memory exists as a nightmare. Leonardo says he's questioning macho rituals that men experience as rites of passage. It's pervasive in every sport and I think it's echoed in the military, in politics, in family, in the workplace. We're at once supposed to be a team player while at the same time survive, exhibit superiority. Leonardo's video is currently on display at the Canton Museum of Art in Ohio. Part of the exhibition, Scrimmage. Max Barton is the museum's executive director. Who knew that football could make you think about so many different things? Absolutely. This is not football art. This is the art of football that is teaching you about where our country came from. Scrimmage brings 78 works together from 150 years of American art. This is Andy Warhol, and this is from the mid-70s with uh, his series called The Athletes. Items range from Polaroids and a screen print of O.J. Simpson. We don't think of O.J. as even being a part of the game of football anymore because of what that celebrity has become. To a painting by the iconic American artist Norman Rockwell. Do young boys today dream of growing up to being the football star, the football hero, uh, which the title of this piece is A Little Boy Has a Lot of Heroes. From the 1961 so Rockwell. So these are the, the series of photos that started the scrimmage exhibition. To photographs of today's young players. And this is really a study of what do players look like before they go on the field, before they become part of the team? Is he the, the nerd? Is he the captain of the team? The exhibition, which was originally curated by staff at Colorado State and the University of Oregon, tackles eight different themes, like race, class, and ethnicity, and violence. This piece, which is called The Onslaught, it gives you an idea about the, the roughness, the brutality of the game, and what goes on inside the football scrum. The section includes Fumble in the Line by Ernie Barnes. So he has an interesting story in that he was both artist and football player. Ernie was, was, played for five seasons, uh, went to uh, college on a football scholarship to study art. He was known by his teammates uh, in the NFL as Big Rembrandt, was the name that he was called on the sidelines. Around 20 of the pieces are on loan from the personal collection of Michael Oriard. Okay, so these are um, pieces by Frederick Remington in Harper's Weekly. Like this wood engraved collage from 1888. And so the background here is actually, you know, multiple lines. Every, everything had to be hand carved. I mean, this, this is, is art. This is art. Oriard played college football at Notre Dame and four seasons in the NFL with the Kansas City Chiefs. He would go on to become a professor of English at Oregon State University. As football became popular or was beginning, and it was beginning at elite universities at Harvard, Yale, and Princeton, and you know, Harper's Weekly was interested in that audience, they began representing the game. Over the years, Oriard began amassing a treasure trove of the earliest depictions of the game. You know, most of this is through eBay, you know. eBay gives you access to everybody's <laughs> attic, right? You know, and most Somebody's of these- trash is your exactly, treasure. Exactly, yeah. Oriard has published six books on the game, the most recent, The Art of Football, which looks at the period from 1870 to 1920. Gender was central to football from the very beginning because it was just overwhelmingly and obviously male, masculine. And, and football's initial appeal came from that fact, that right. anxiety in the society that 
that Americans were getting soft by working in factories now instead of on farms. And women were essential to, to the game because their presence sort of validated it. You know, fo football is, is not sheer brutality, you know, if women can enjoy it. Race has always <laughs> been a part of this Race game. Has always been a part of it. Black colleges started playing football in the 1890s just like everybody else in the country, but football in the South was wholly segregated. I played in college against segregated teams. Oriard points out that a number of former African-American players in the early 20th century, like Paul Robeson and William Henry Lewis, would become influential activists and politicians. Decades later, a new generation of football players are also expressing themselves through activism, and maybe even art. Is it safe to say that Colin Kaepernick taking a knee in some ways is performance art? I think it's very much so. And I think what, one, one thing that I'm attempting to argue is that our life on the field very much mirrors our experience and existence outside of the field. And we all, at some point, feel a need to make that gesture. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Dana Jacobson, Canton, Ohio. Well, it looks like a fascinating exhibit. Yeah, especially now that football is really at the front lines of cultural debate. Sure Good timing. Is.